Hi, I'm Mike Edwards. The website is Home Improvement Doctor. Uh, we're part of the DIY Doctor group. Um, and this is the second in our series of ceramic tiling videos. Um, the first one being how to repair holes and cracks in walls uh, with um, one coat or patching plaster after you've taken the old tiles off. Um, so having done that one, um, we can put that stuff aside there now. Um, and I have to say, uh, apologies first of all, DIY Doctor loves to keep things real, um, but sometimes we just, especially during the summer, we don't book many bathrooms in. Uh, we'd prefer to be outdoors. Um, so sometimes we can't be on site, but we have built a, um, a, a proper film studio so that we can mock up these videos to show you. So quite clearly this isn't a real bathroom, um, but we've got everything fitted so that it, it will replicate um, the, the stuff that you're going to try and do in your bathroom. Okay, so this video is called Setting Out for Ceramic Tiles, and it's very, very important part of the tiling process. Um, you need to know where every single tile is going to go on your wall before you've started. Um, and one of the things to remember is that before you start tiling um, and before you choose your tiles, it's a really good idea to check just how level and flat um, your walls are. Now you can, you can do that simply by using a spirit level and moving that about over the wall. And if it's touching in mo most places, you've got fairly flat and level walls, which means that you can use bigger ceramic tiles. The bumpier your walls, the more undulating the surface, the smaller the tiles you will need to use, or you will need to have your bathroom re-skimmed um, to try and get them flat. Because if you use very big ceramic tiles on a surface that is really uneven, quite clearly not all of the tile is going to be stuck to the wall. And that's really quite important, that all of the tile is stuck at some point to the wall. Okay, so um, choose your tiles after you've checked your walls. Um, if you've got a, a 500 year old Watland Orb cottage and the walls are all over the place like the Himalayas and you try and stick two foot square travertine tiles on there, you're going to have problems. Okay, so um, either skim the walls to get them flat or choose smaller tiles which will go with the, uh, the undulations of the wall. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is to, we're going to be tiling this wall here, the most difficult wall in, in the bathroom. This one's got the bath on it and, and the, the toilet. Um, we've taken the toilet pan out for ease because um, realistically you don't actually tile around any part of the toilet pan. All you tile around is the, is the pipe that goes into the wall and sometimes even that goes into the floor. So we've taken the toilet out of the way so you can see what we're doing. Okay, so the very first thing that we need to do is to establish which is the widest part of this wall. Is it the floor um, where the skirting board is or is it at, at the ceiling? Which is the, the widest part of the room? Now we can do that either with a tape measure, we can simply measure the bottom, the middle and the top from side to side, um, or we can do that in conjunction with a spirit level and see which way the walls are um, away from perpendicular and in in pretty much every house we've ever worked in uh, the walls uh, are leaning over one way or another not necessarily by a great deal but we can simply put the uh, the spirit level on the wall um, and by moving the bottom or the top uh, to get it level to get it upright we can see at the bottom here there's a gap of somewhere between quarter and a half an inch so that would be six, somewhere between six and 10 millimeters perhaps. So we know that the, the wall is actually leaning over at the top, um, which means that the bottom um, is the widest part of the bathroom. So we need to check the walls both sides to make sure that's the case. Check it with a tape measure. But once we've established the widest part of the bathroom, which in this instance is the floor, um, we can then start to set out our tiles. So first of all, work out which is the widest part of the wall that you're going to work on. And as I've said, it's the bottom in this instance, okay? Now, the reason that we're going to do that is because the very last thing that we put on the wall when we're ceramic tiling are the cuts around the perimeter. We cut the tile, the last tile, into the wall. So if it's sloping inwards, as this wall is, as we go up, the cuts will get smaller and we know we've got a neat joint all the way up rather than starting or starting at a wall with a full tile um, we would be in a great deal of difficulty because 
We know the wall is sloping over at the top, which means effectively these tiles, if we started at that wall, these tiles will be coming down at an angle um, and they will look awful. So we need to make sure that all of the tiles that we get on this wall, independently of the shape of the floor, the ceiling, and the walls either side, we need to know that every tile we've put on there is completely square, okay? And then we can put the cuts in to suit the shape of the walls on the perimeter. And the way we're gonna do that is um, we're gonna use a stick. Um, it's actually what's called a gauging baton. And we're gonna gauge where our tiles go using this baton rather than keep holding tiles onto the wall and marking them. Um, and potentially making a mistake that way. So we simply get um, a piece of timber. In this case, it's about an inch and a, inch and a half by half an inch, or uh, what's that, 30 millimeters by 10 millimeters, a piece of batten. And we mark on the, the batten, as you can see. We always start with a joint, in this particular case there. Um, I've done the joints in orange, so they show up quite well. Put a tile on there, mark the joint, move the tile over, mark the joint again, and continue all the way along the batten. It doesn't matter, in this case, we've actually cut the batten off at the end of a joint so we can use either end, but it doesn't particularly matter, you'll see why later. Okay, you will also notice, and I'll point this out to you straight away, that these joints are quite a bit bigger than the two millimeter joints that, um, that tilers or, or domestic tilers, DIY tilers, home improvers, tend to use. They tend to use the two millimetre spacers. We use five millimetre spacers simply because when the tiles are fitted absolutely square to each other and they're on the walls, then the spacers themselves, the joints themselves, make a much better job. The joints form part of the wall, so don't try and disguise them. Um, make make the, the joints part of the job. It's a lot neater. The second reason for using slightly bigger spaces is that the most important part of this tiling that we're going to do isn't the tiles themselves because they are waterproof. To all intents and purposes, although they've got something like a 3 to 5% water absorption rate, they are waterproof. Not water resistant, waterproof. The joints, however, are the vulnerable part. So the most important part when we finish this, and it will be the final video on grouting a wall, will be the getting the grout in the joints. And to make that easier, to ensure that we've got those joints watertight, we open the joints up a little bit. It's a myth to think that the smaller the joints, the more watertight your wall is. That's not the case at all, because it's sometimes that doesn't allow you to force the grout into the joint. One little lump of grout gets stuck in the joint. It looks like it's full, but of course it's not. There's a void behind it. So by increasing the joints a little bit and absolutely filling them with grout, you can ensure that you've got a watertight wall. Okay, now we're gonna set out. So we've established that the widest part of the wall is at the bottom. So we'll start our tiling with a joint. We'll put a joint uh, against the wall and we'll hold the stick onto the wall or the batten onto the wall. And if the cameraman can pan along there, you can see that we've got joint tile, joint tile, etc. So we know that using um, this batten here, that at the end of this um, batten, I've put a pencil mark on the wall, which I'll point to again in a moment. And if we started tiling along there, from that corner, this would be the end of the joint of a tile, okay? Now we can see quite clearly, or by measuring or holding a tile up, um, or even using our, our gauge rod again, that leaves us with about three quarters of a tile. Now, that's not a bad cut to have, uh, three quarters of a tile. What we don't want to end up is with tiny little slivers of tile at either end or whatever. But what we'd prefer is, because this is a finished edge, or will be a finished edge by the time we finish tiling this wall, I'd prefer that three quarters of a tile to be over on that wall, okay? So we can actually do it the other way around so that we know that if we start um, with a full tile, um, or around about a full tile going up um, th this, this end nearest me, we're gonna end up with about three quarters of a tile at that end, 
Okay, so we're going to set this wall out. Now we've established that. We're going to set this wall out so that we know we can start with almost a full tile here. Um, because this wall itself, this, this edge itself, is sloping over exactly the same way. So there's going to be a little bit of cutting involved here, um, but it's going to look a lot neater because this is more exposed than the corner. It's going to look a lot neater to have a bigger cut there. So we're going to move the three quarters of a tile over to that corner, and that's where we'll start tiling. So the first thing that we need to do is establish a mark on the wall at around about three quarters of a tile. So we'll go back over to, to this corner. And we can see that these tiles here, these are six inch tiles, including a joint. Okay, so three quarters of that is gonna be four and a half inches. So we can mark that on the tile, which is there. Or we could just measure it off the wall and we can make sure that we put a, a mark on the wall to show that that's the cut that we're going to have into the corner. Okay? So we know from that point onwards, that's the cut tile. So at the, after the cut tile, we're going to start with a joint and then we're going to look. across the wall and we know that the tiles are going to form there. So we're going to look for the first vertical line that will go without any obstructions. That's what we're going to look for. And it turns out to be this one here at the end of the joint. That's going to be our vertical line. Don't forget what we're trying to do is set out a perfectly square part of this wall so that we can tile independently of what the, the walls either side are doing. So we'll put the spirit level on that line. We know that to be perfectly upright. And then, having got the level 100% upright, I hope the camera can see that, we can draw a line on the wall down to the skirting board. So we know our first column of tiles is going to be along this line because we know that to be perfectly vertical independently. And we know that if we start laying there, when we lay back that way, we know for a fact that we've got a three quarter cut there. And when we lay back this way, we know that we have almost a full tile here. So there's going to be a little tile, um, a little cut at the bottom and that cut might get a little bit bigger, but it's going to be quite a big cut at this end. Um, going into the bead that we're going to put um, on this wall. I have, a, I have a bead here, which I'll demonstrate for you. So we're going to cut that tile into that bead so that we've hidden the cut edge and we know that that's going to be virtually a full tile there. And at the same time, we've got a fairly decent three quarter cut at that side by starting on this line. Now, similarly, the ceiling is going to be out of parallel, very likely with the floor. It's not going to be level. So what we've got to do is set the, do the whole thing the other way around as well. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put our stick or our gauging batten on the skirting. Okay, and we're going to work up the wall. Again, we're going to mark that there so that we know that is a full tile and a joint at the end. And then we're going to move it up to the ceiling as close as we can get to the ceiling. So by putting our gauging rod on the mark that I made there, we can see that if we started off at the skirting with a full tile, we would end up with a silly little cut at the ceiling. Does that, I hope that makes sense, okay? So if we started off from the skirting board with a full tile and we worked our way up, we would end up with a tiny little sliver of a cut at the ceiling, which is going to look horrible. It's going to make life very, very difficult for us. So the best thing to do there would be to enlarge that cut 
to about half a tile or three quarters of a tile, which would of course reduce the size of the starting tile, which would then go down to about three quarters of a tile. So that's pretty much the same um, as the as the the width. Um, that's what we're going to achieve with the width. And you will very find very often find that bathrooms are quite square along those lines anyway. So the cuts are fairly similar. So as we're going to do with this the uh, from side to side, we're going to do the same thing from the skirting here. Now I've cheated a little bit, and I've, I've already done this exercise. Um, um, and as I said before, if we start with around about three quarters of a tile down at the bottom, and this isn't, um, this doesn't have to be uh, precise, because um, if we move that down quarter of an inch, all it's going to do is make that cut at the top about a quarter of an inch bigger. So we have a little bit to play with, which is important when we come to tile on the bath, because now we've put this line on the wall, um, our level line where we're going to start from so we can see quite clearly the intersection of these lines our first tile is going to go there okay then we, want, we need to see then where that comes in relation to the bath so we'll put that on there remembering that we've got a join and we can see that the top if we tile up there with full tiles we can see that in this instance the top of the one to the third tile is 60, 70 millimeters above the level of the bath. Now that's absolutely fine, because what we're gonna do is we'll, we'll leave that, as we tile up the wall with our first row, we know that when we finished with the bath, and we'll talk about this when we come to laying the tiles, but we know we've set out an area, um, a, a gap, 70 millimeters above the bath, so we mark a line, a level line across there on the, when we've laid our third tile. Um, and then we can set out around the bath, knowing that when everything's tiled, it's all level and square. And then we come back and cut that, those last tiles down into the bath. So that's how we set out um, for, uh, for tiling a bathroom. And ordinarily, what we would do now, um, everybody in the, in the trade uses then a little piece of batten and simply for having marked the lines on the wall as to where the tiles are going to go we used to um, I'll explain that, that term in a moment okay. we simply tack tack that button to our line and that supports our first row of tiles. So that's our first tile, that goes there. We carry on tiling up the wall, we carry tiling along, we cut round the pipes which is something that we will talk about later on. Um, I have another piece of batten that's cut here and this goes the other side of the, uh, the toilet pipe. So we simply fix that, just tack that in a couple of millimetres, it doesn't have to be a lot. Put that onto the line, And that's where our first row of tile goes along there. And then we carry on up that line to our next course and continue going, cutting around the system, etc. as we go. Cutting we'll deal with in another, in another video. But that's how we set out a bathroom to make sure that every tile that we put on this wall is absolutely square with the one next to it. And then when we get to the edges, um, and the bottom at the top, the floor and the ceiling, or the skirting board and the ceiling, we simply cut those bits in last, um, and we, uh, we have a perfectly square wall. When we've tiled up three tiles, we can then fit a batten, we can cut another batten just like this, and tack it to the wall at that sort of height, so that our tile can carry on along the batten, um, and then we put the cuts in afterwards. Okay, now battens have been used for years and years and years by tradesmen to, to get their first row of tiles properly. In a, in a video a little later on, in fact, I think it's the next in the series, we'll be introducing um, something called Tile Tracker. Now, Tile Tracker is an adjustable, very lightweight aluminium bar which replaces the batten. It takes away the need 
for uh, putting nails into the wall. It takes away the need for the, for the battens entirely because this simply goes against the wall and is adjusted to the line that we've put on there. That's a separate video altogether, um, but uh, that's coming on, that's coming on uh, to be the next in the series. Um, but that's how we set out a bathroom to make absolutely sure that regardless of the shape of the floor, the walls or the ceilings, every tile on that wall is square to the one next to it, which gives us a perfect joint, um, which as I said, we kept at five millimeters to make sure that we can fill it with grout. Um, and then we know when we come to the tiling, everything's gonna be just right. So that's how to set out a bathroom wall for ceramic tiling. Um, and that's Home Improvement Doctor. <laughs>